welcome to a new episode of the PIF Review. Those of you who were kind enough to comment on the last episode of Nuclear Nightmares will notice that production quality has been improved significantly. Now this has got nothing to do with finance. It really hasn't. Mad Cow Productions did have a kind of um, conversation with our bank manager. There was no real disagreement, but uh, I think it's fair to say there was no real meeting of the minds either. Nevertheless, this episode is all about seatbelt safety. Devotees of this series may remember this gyrating arse. Meet Mr. Blunders. That's right. He's the bibbling twonk who nearly caused someone to lose their life because he was totally unable to keep his mind where the rest of his body was. <laughs> Even on the shortest trips, beware of the blunders. Clunk, click. Now that was certainly a classic PIF, but the COI hadn't finished with the blunders yet. Oh no, indeed they had a whole family to choose from. This evening, young Billy Blunders has borrowed the keys to the family car. He's looking forward to an exciting night out, and he's got every confidence in his driving ability, which is more than his dad has. What does he mean he's going to put his foot down? I'll show him what putting your foot down means. Stupid. Whoops. Hello. Me dandruff's back again. Hold up. Me luck will be in here. Hello, love. Clear off. Oh, well, can't win them all. I know. I wonder what that little Karen's doing tonight. You could meet Billy Blunders on your way home from work. And no matter how well you think you know the road, no matter how sensibly you drive, Billy Blunders could be round the next corner. That's why you should always wear your seatbelt. Even on the shortest trips, beware of the blunders. Clunk, click. Yet yeah, again, why is the viewer being told off? Surely Billy Blunders is the one who deserves a bollocking, not us. In 1971, this movie was just the latest in the Clunk Click series a series which uh, had its very humble beginnings in the late 60s. Before you say you'll never get hurt, well, every single day, hundreds of people say it can't happen to me, but it does. And the difference between an ugly smash-up and just a nasty shake-up could be simply the seatbelt habit. So before any of us say it can't happen to me, Snap into that seatbelt habit. You know it makes sense. As the 60s gave way to the 70s, that last ad campaign was considered a little too soft sell, and suddenly images of high speed fenestration became all the rage. You've got to remember that these images of violent death and blood were clearly visible on UK television in the middle of cartoon shows. And if you thought that that was a teeny bit heavy handed, you should see some of the point of view shots they like to do. You are about to be taken on an unforgettable journey. Oh God, don't worry mate, I won't be long, I'll, I'll get someone. You couldn't have been doing more than 20. You should be aware of the You'll never forget a trip through your windscreen, so remember to put on your seatbelt. Soon you may have to by law, but you can get into the habit now. Clunk, click. Say what you like about piffs. I think they give us a good insight into what Dario Argento and Toby Hooper got up to on their day off. But if such scenes of violence aren't really your cup of tea, don't worry about it. How would some visual imagery grab you? I don't know what all the fuss is about. Taking a short trip round town without a seatbelt can be just as risky. It can, you know. If you have a crash at only 30 miles an hour and you don't have a seatbelt to restrain you, you're liable to go through the windscreen with the same force as if you dived head first through that glass roof 30 feet below. 
Anyone who thinks it's mad to take a risk like this must think it's mad to drive around town without a seatbelt on. Clunk, click, even on the shortest trips. Not art house enough for you? Well, don't you worry. By 1990, the COI would fix that. <laughs> In a crash at 30 miles an hour, an adult backseat passenger without a seatbelt is thrown forward with a force of three and a half tons. The weight of an elephant charging straight through the driver. You're never safe in the back until you fasten your seatbelt. Never forget. The COI have got horror movies to suit every taste. As you may have just worked out, the focus has been moved from the drivers to the passengers. And this gave rise to a lot more happy films. Like most victims, Julie knew her killer. It was her son. He wasn't wearing his seatbelt. After crushing her to death, he sat back down. Think about wearing a seatbelt. Think about wearing a seatbelt? You show me a film like that and you want me to think about wearing a seatbelt? Oh, okay, fine. I'd hate to see what one of your strong suggestions looked like. The way the story is told here is actually quite ingenious. Like most victims, Julie knew her killer. That line alone makes it perfect for insertion into any cop show that ITV sad. might have been running at the time. He wasn't wearing his seatbelt. After crushing her to death, he sat back down. Think about wearing a seatbelt. If murder mystery analogies, or near-death experiences, or classy visual imagery weren't doing it for you, then the COI had a perfect go-to in cold, hard scientific fact. Richard didn't want to die, but he couldn't stop himself. The collision with the car didn't kill him. But he wasn't wearing a seatbelt, so he continued on his journey. When he hit the inside of the car, that didn't kill him either. But his internal organs carried on travelling until they hit his ribcage and his lungs were punctured and the main artery from his heart was torn. And that's what killed Richard. Hammer films didn't go out of business in the 1970s, they simply got jobs with the government. So that's what happens to a lone driver. What would happen to a car full of passengers? Well, don't worry, they've thought of that too. Every year, about 1,300 children are killed or seriously injured in cars. Do, 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 this car is doing 25 do, do, miles per hour. Do, 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 the man in front do, do, is holding do, do, a baby. Do, 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 in the do, back, do, do, someone's holding an older baby. Sorry, I couldn't resist it. A three-year-old is loose on the seat. The front baby's head hits the dashboard. The rear baby is crushed by the adult. As for the three-year-old... Now look at this crash. The babies in the front and back are in proper rear-facing baby seats. The three-year-old in the back is in a child safety seat. All they would have suffered is slight bruising. Protect your child. Fit rear seat belts or child safety seats. Harrowing as these films certainly are, it's not as if they don't have an important point to make. I've always thought it a bit of a shame that the government actually had to step in to tell people to use their common sense in some cases 
and to encourage them not to do something which was a bloody stupid idea in the first place in others. But these PIFs are more than just a little trip down memory lane or a way to give our fear senses a little tickle. If you look at them very carefully they all have something to say about how you make films. I think leading studios should pay attention to these. Yes, Rob Zombie, I'm looking at you. Anyway, I do hope you enjoyed the show, and so, until next time, take very good care of yourselves.